So it's not, in, it's not necessarily a case of this one is bad, this one is good. It depends on what are your needs as a consumer. Okay, so Android has two flavors, two versions, two variants, whatever you want to call it. The first one being 32 bits, second one being 64 bits. Now we're going to start off with the 32 bit version. The 32 bit version of Android actually comes from way back way back 2008, 2009, I guess. And it's been around, it was the dominant version of Android all the way from 2008, that's the, basically the late 2000s, to the mid 2010s, where it was gladly replaced by the 64-bit Android version. What's the difference between these two and why is this information important? First off, 32-bit version of Android is older less sophisticated and outdated. It's outdated because it has certain limitations. It comes from a time where technology, software development, and the hardware we had wasn't, wasn't as sophisticated or as good as what we have now. So it's basically locked to an era in the past that we are, we've moved on from. We're going on to the next stage of evolution of tech right now. And so 32-bit Android software isn't good enough for the tasks and the apps and the games that we have now. One, one very stark limitation of 32-bit Android is that it can only ever, the software can only ever address 4 gigs of RAM. So that means that if we have, or if we only use 32-bit Android software, that means who, our phones are going to be stuck at 4 gigs of RAM, which is a bit sad if you ask me. So that's one limitation. Another one being inability to handle very sophisticated apps like Snapchat, for example, like the full version of Facebook, for example, and others. Because 32-bit Android software lacks a lot of software commands. It cannot really incorporate too many software commands to run these apps. And that's not just that. High-definition gaming, like eFootball, for example, eFootball would not run on anything other than 64-bit Android. So if you've got a 32-bit Android phone, forget it. 32-bit Android phones don't run eFootball. They certainly won't run Fortnite, Genshin Impact, and what have you. Because the 32-bit Android software lacks the ability to be able to run these apps. And let's not talk about the fact that it's older, here, and there, and there. The 2-bit Android does have its advantages, being that it's lighter and it's easier on the processor. That is why you find you tend to find 32-bit Android on entry-level smartphones. Entry-level smartphones is where you find 32-bit Android software because they are easier on the processor. They won't bog the processor down. They won't slow it down. So that's why you see that on entry-level phones, you find 32-bit Android software on entry-level phones using entry-level processors like Helio G36, for example, which is on the uh, Redmi A2 Plus, Redmi A3, and you know, the ITEL A70 with um, Unisoc T603, 32-bit Android software, as well as other stuff. There are some games that have been optimized to run on 32-bit software, like um, like PUBG Mobile, for example, like Call of Duty Mobile, for example, like Free Fire, for example. Yeah, these ones have been optimized to run on 32-bit Android software, but games like eFootball, for example, Warzone Mobile, won't run. They're exclusively 64-bit Android games. So 64-bit Android, on the other hand, let's move on to 64-bit Android now. On the other hand, is the full version of Android. So we can now say since 64-bit uh, 64-bit version of Android has like all of the features of Android, then you can even say that the 2-bit Android is kind of like the slimmed down version of Android, which lacks a lot of features that are packed into the 64-bit version. Now, before we talked about the advantage, before we're going to talk about the advantages, let's look at the disadvantage that 64-bit Android has, it's heavy, it's complex, it requires a lot of processor, CPU power to run. That's why you find it on higher-end phones with more powerful processors. But if you have a phone or if you buy a phone that has decent performance that can handle 64-bit Android, then that gives you access to the entire library that Android has to offer, all the apps, all the social media, and absolutely, in my case, all the games. Yeah. All the games 
from Warzone Mobile to, you know, depending on the power of your SOC. Put that in mind, depending on the power of your SOC. If you have Snapdragon 685 and you want to go and play Warzone or you suck T606, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, but if you've got like a decent, anything with like you know, anything like Helio G99 and above, that means the 6080, uh, that means the 7200, uh, Snapdragon 7S Gen 2, like that. Yeah, you're going to have access to a lot of apps and you're going to enjoy this pretty much. And then also, um, the full version of Android 64 bit also gives access for the software can access or can address more than four gigs of RAM all the way up to 16 gigs of RAM, which is actually double, double? More than, more than double what, uh, triple even, what 32-bit uh, Android is capable of. So how do you spot 32-bit Android or phones with 32-bit Android? Now, a lot of companies tend to hide this information. They do, they tend to hide it a lot. So it's why I usually respect companies like uh, Samsung, for example, or Xiaomi who makes it easy for customers to know that this is 32-bit Android. So if you're using, if you're going to, if you're using Samsung or you're interested in a Samsung phone, it's going to be written there, One UI Core. When you see One UI Core, what it means is that they kept only the core features of Android and they removed the other parts. So the core features, calls, communication, light games, etc. Only the core features are there. If you see One UI Core, that is basically 32-bit Android software. For other phones, you can see Android Go. When you see Android Go, then yeah, totally, that's 32-bit software. But if you go, if you're on a Samsung phone, you just see One UI there, One UI 6, One UI 5, then that's the full version. If you just see MIUI, HyperOS, full version, and just like that. So that's basically how you spot the difference between the two. Which one should you be getting? Depends on you as a user. For example, my mom uses a 32-bit Android phone. And she's actually happy with it. She doesn't care about games or using heavy software. She's got Facebook Lite. She's okay with that. She's got WhatsApp. She plays light games here and there. That's all she ever needs. So me going to tell her that Ma, 32-bit Android software doesn't have this, doesn't have that, it's not going to make any sense to her. She has what she has. She's happy with it. That's her type of person. But for somebody like me, for example, who wants to play football, Warzone and stuff, 32-bit Android software is not even going to be close to what I need. So I'm going to make sure that if I see 32-bit Android software, I'd, you know, I'd get out of the way and then go for something with 64-bit Android software. So it's not, in, it's not necessarily a case of this one is bad, this one is good. It depends on what are your needs as a consumer. Do you know what you need? Do you know what your needs are? Have you answered that question by yourself? That would then determine if 32-bit Android software, phones with 32-bit Android is good or bad for you, or if phones with 64-bit Android is what you need, or if it's overkill. Yeah, that's that. We've come to the end of this video. My name is Jeffrey. Thank you very much for coming. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share small actions like these that helps more channels like mine grow. And I'll see you in the next one.